Hey everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this new video card from HIS. This is HIS's rendition of the AMD R9-280X. We shall begin with a closer look at the retail box and a uh, unique distinction I wanted to make right here from the get-go. Uh, up here at the top we have a part number. This one is the H280XQMT3G2M. Pay attention to that T there. There's another version of this without a T, which is a non-overclock version. You will find both of them on Newegg.com, but if you're looking for this one specifically, you want the one with a T, because that means it's a turbo uh, version, which means it is overclocked directly from the manufacturer. So bear that in mind. Uh, up here, let's see, we have iPower. iPower design allows the card to carry more voltage expanding overclocking capability to a new level, which means this card is designed for overclocking. I actually have overclocked this card specifically a bit. I can say it handles it quite nicely. That's, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, thanks to the uh, cooler as well as the custom design PCB. So cooler and quieter, and again, the turbo mode here, um, since this is factory overclocked. Uh, boost clock, it's also overclocked. <laughs> They're just Kind of reinforcing that fact. Uh, the iTurbo utility is from HIS. Um, it comes on the uh, included disc and you can also download it. It's basically an overclocking utility you can use to manage uh, the card's clock speeds and whatnot and uh, set up some profiles. You can also do that using the AMD Catalyst Control Center. Uh, this is the Radeon R9-280X, of course. That's the GPU. It's a PCI Express Gen 3 uh, compatible video card, although you can run it on a PCI Express Gen 2 motherboard without suffering barely any performance degradation at all. You get three gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. It's uh, pre-set up, or basically they've designed this card to work right out of the box for 4K and 2K Ultra HD displays. Uh, you get HDMI out. And uh, here on the side, you will notice power requirements. Uh, specifically right up there, apart from having an open PCI Express 16X slot, uh, you will want a 750 watt greater or greater power supply with two 150 watt 8 pin PCI Express PEG graphics connectors. If you're going to be doing a crossfire configuration with two cards, they're recommending 1000 watts or greater, so bear that in mind. Here on the back of the box, we have some more uh, logos and stuff for the uh, features of the cards. Uh, so up here at the top, they're telling you that this card is going to run cooler, although they're not telling you exactly how much cooler. Um, it also is going to run quieter, although that's a little subjective, but anyway. This card does run cooler and quieter than the, uh, quieter than the reference card, I can say that. Um, although I have not scientifically measured it. You get a five heat pipe array uh, helping keep the uh, GPU cool. Uh, IceQ X2 cooling technology, that is the name of the cooler they designed for this one. And uh, six phase dynamic uh, PWM uh, uh, integrated circuits uh, for controlling of the power delivery to the GPU and the memory. Full solid state capacitors, solid state chokes. And then down here you have a list of uh, features and compatibilities. Uh, so you guys can take a closer look at that while I get this card out of the box. And we have a black internal box with the HIS logos, which stands for High Tech Information Systems, in case you guys are wondering. Bear in mind, graphics cards get hot. And this is also telling me, what is this telling you? Graphics card, PCIe slot. I don't understand what this is telling you. Oh, they're telling you to install it the correct way so that it hooks in, I guess. And uh, also, when you're transporting graphics cards, make sure to be careful because it's a great way to break them. Uh, here's the graphics card itself, which comes in some protective packaging. Uh, we also have the DVI to VGA adapter, which comes in just about every single video card that you ever bought, although not all of them. Uh, but uh, if you have an older VGA monitor with a 15-pin D-sub connector, you can use that to connect it up to this graphics card. You also get a crossfire bridge. Uh, again, if you're going to be doing a two-way crossfire configuration, you can use that bridge to connect this card up with the other card that you buy. And let's just move right on to the graphics card itself. So inside the packaging. Here is the IceQ X2 cooler. If it looks familiar, that's because they've actually been using this design for quite some time. Uh, it's a design that I can say I like because I know it keeps the card nice and cool. Uh, in fact, a lot of the cards um, from the last generation, the 7000 series that were using this cooler, ran a good 15 to 20 degrees Celsius uh, cooler than the reference design card. So I can say that. I can't say specifically for this card. I did plug this card in and overclock it. Uh, the core clock on this card out of the box is 1000 megahertz for the GPU. The boost clock is 1050 megahertz. I cranked it up to 1150 for this particular card and it ran nice and smooth with no problems at all. Now bear in mind that with overclocking your mileage may vary, but uh, again, that was something I was not able to do with every 280X graphics card that has come my way. Uh, apart from that, black and silver is kind of the color scheme that they're going with here. Uh, you've got the uh, iPower and iTurbo stickers there on the fans. I'm going to give a quick measurement, assuming that I can gracefully pull my 
my uh, my measuring stick out of the drawer. That's not not happening at all. Wait, wait. I've almost got it. Okay. A quick measurement of the card reveals that this card is almost 12 inches in length. So bear that in mind. This is a fairly substantial card. The trade-off there is you get a lot more uh, surface area for the aluminum fin array that's below that. So make sure you've got a good, uh, I'm going to say just make sure you've got 12 inches of space. It's about 11 and 3 quarters inches measured from uh, the PCI bracket back there. And then the fans, which I know I've measured this before, but let me double check. We're looking at about 85 millimeters on both of those fans. They're downward firing, and you can probably see all of those aluminum fin stacks underneath them. So again, more surface area on the fins means more heat can be dissipated more efficient, efficiently. Apart from that, it's an open design cooler. So uh, whereas the, uh, the arrangement of the fins is going to uh, engage the air, uh, it's going to basically, <laughs> I'm trying to use fancy words here, the air going to move this way and this way along the aluminum fins to put that in more simply. Uh, so you're going to have some air pushing out the back here as well as out the sides to some extent. So just make sure you've got airflow in your case as long as you've got that moving through there with one or two intake and one or two exhaust fans. You're not going to have too much heat build up with this card. Uh, and then you can also see some of the heat pipes. You can see three of them on this side. Uh, they're using some six millimeter, millimeter and eight millimeter heat pipes to help more efficiently transfer that heat from the GPU out into the fin array and then allow it to be dispersed by the fans. This uh, shroud is also made of metal, which I also find to be nice. Uh, it gives it a bit nicer look, kind of a bit of a matte finish there on the outside, but uh, that definitely feels more substantial than uh, some of the plastic shrouded cards that you might see. Uh, let's see, if, it's, if you have this card installed in your case, you're probably going to be, um, wait, no, I have this completely upside down, this way. There we go. If you have this card installed in your case, you're probably going to be seeing that side of it. So you'll get a look at the PCB on the top, which is a uh, bluish color, blue, blue, slightly turquoise color. Uh, you can see where the GPU is right beneath that metal bracket right there. Uh, and then you can see that the, sh the shroud uh, is held down primarily by those uh, at those points, but then you also have uh, this little black piece right here. This is providing some extra rigidity right above the PCB. It's also uh, making some contact with some of the components uh, for the power delivery in there, so that's going to help uh, uh, keep those components a bit cooler as well. You'll notice that that black metal piece also comes right up here and makes an attachment right here to the, uh, the expansion slot bracket, and that is where that will be bolted to the case, so that's going to help make sure that stays nice and sturdy. Uh, the card is a little bit taller than some cards, so bear that in mind. You have uh, maybe an inch to an inch and a half of uh, vertical space here. Typically, that's not a concern in most computer cases that you might install this in, but just wanted to point that out so you're aware of it. For power requirements, I uh, mentioned this on the outside of the box, but you've got two 8-pin uh, PCI Express graphics connectors, and that is more. That is uh, an example of how this card has been a bit overbuilt as compared to the reference design. So again, 750-watt uh, power supply recommended for this card if uh, you're going to be using it, I suppose. Uh, PCI Express uh, Gen 3, there's your standard connector right there. Physically, it's the same as PCI Express Gen 1 and Gen 2. Uh, as long as you're rocking Gen 2 or 2.1, again, you should be just fine with this card. It's really difficult to saturate that bus either way, um, but you will get a, a couple points, uh, better benchmark results if you are running it on PCI Express Gen 3. We've got a couple crossfire fingers up there as well. This card is compatible or capable of two-way, three-way, and four-way crossfire configurations. Um, so if you do like running many, many graphics cards, well, that's, that's definitely an option. Here are your video outs down on this side. Uh, bear in mind, you got a couple mini display port outputs. Uh, so you might want to consider uh, purchasing a couple adapters for that since they aren't included in the box, but uh, not all displays have mini display port natively, or just get one of those cables that has mini display port on one end and uh, full size display port on the other. You also get a HDMI 1.4. These are display port 1.2, by the way, and they're your full size uh, dual link DVI connection that does have the analog connection points as well, so that will work with that DVI to VGA adapter. A few more uh, specs for this card just as I uh, move towards closing here. Uh, you get 2048 stream processors, 128 texture units, 32 uh, rasterizers or raster operations pops, pipelines, however you want to say that, but 32 ROPs basically. Uh, again, a base clock of 1000 megahertz and a boost clock of 1050 megahertz. The memory on this card, which is 3 gigs of GDDR5, is running at 6 gigahertz effectively. Uh, it has a typical board power or TDP of 250 watts. And then again, it is a dual slot card, so uh, don't worry, you should have space uh, in your computer 
or on your motherboard, especially if you're going to be doing multi-card uh, configurations of this, to fit multiples of them side by side. And uh, that pretty much wraps it up for our look at this card. And did I say that wraps it up? I actually forgot one little thing, and that is that there is a tiny, tiny switch right here. Uh, I'm not going to show you guys a close-up because it's really just a little switch, but basically this card has two V BIOSes, so that will let you switch back and forth between them. You can use that to set an overclock profile on one and a default profile on the other, for example, or you can use it just to uh, have a backup just in case you like having your V BIOS backed up. I find it to be convenient. But that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching, you guys. If you enjoyed it or found it useful or informative, go ahead and uh, maybe click a like button down there or maybe leave me some feedback in the feedback section down below. Love to hear what you think about this card, the design from HIS as well as the uh, 280X from AMD because it is a quite potent GPU, especially at the price point that this one is at. And by the way, you can click the link in the description if you'd like to head over to Newegg to see how much this card is currently selling for. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.